We're going to get things started with our land acknowledgement. So we'd like to begin by acknowledging that the land on which we work, that we know as Peel, is part of the treaty lands and territories of the Mississaugas of the Credit. For thousands of years, Indigenous peoples inhabited and cared for this land. In particular, we acknowledge the territory of the Anishinaabek, Huron-Wendat, Haudenosaunee, and Ojibwe Chippewa peoples, the land that is home to the Métis, and most recently, the territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation, who are direct descendants of the Mississaugas of the Credit. We're grateful to have the opportunity to work on this land and by doing so, give our deepest respect to its first inhabitants. So visit native-land.ca or mncfn.ca to learn more. So native-land.ca is an excellent website to get an idea of the unceded territories and uh, treaty, um, treaty history of, of Canada or Turtle Island as the entire continent is known and, and you can uh, get an idea of what really, what is the truth about the, the land that we're on and move us closer to truth and reconciliation. And uh, mncfn.ca is the website of the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation. So please uh, check that out and, and learn more and make your own commitment for how we can move toward truth and reconciliation. I like to, uh, let you know a little bit about the Boardwalk program. Uh, for those of you who are uh, unfamiliar, uh, it's, a, it's a fantastic program. It's a new program that we've uh, launched in the past uh, few months at Volunteer NBC uh, with the aim to provide experiences and community leadership to skilled volunteers who really can serve in boards and committees or skilled volunteer positions to lend uh, an additional level of expertise. Uh, we know so much how the not-for-profit sector is hurting and has been hurting for a while, but the pandemic has really struck us in a place where we are left not just with needs for volunteers on the front lines, but we also need people who can help with the strategic and complex problems that we now face. So uh, recruiting volunteers is an excellent way to boost the capacity of those organizations. And you know, Volunteer NBC, we're all about connecting with our member organizations. So if you're not already a member of Volunteer NBC as your organization, please do become a Volunteer NBC member organization so that you can uh, access our services and supports and ultimately so we can benefit from you as well. Uh, it's also a program in which we'll have a pool of trained leaders from diverse backgrounds to support, support these social purpose organizations. So diversity in skills, diversity in the community to better represent our community and make sure that um, the not-for-profit sector really uh, reflects that at its leadership level. And so we, we can have built uh, an inclusive and engaged communities together. That's what the aim of the program is. And uh, that's why Trillium is behind this project because uh, it's very much about um, making our community stronger and, and getting people into leadership positions. So through Boardwalk, uh, people get to learn about the roles and responsibilities of the board member and how they provide strategic direction to the organization. It fosters diversity on uh, not-for-profit boards and committees, uh, experiences that lead to actual action. And that's where we really are, are trying to uh, get uh, to today through this dialogue and through this opportunity to get to know the organizations and for the organizations to get to know the participants and ultimately make those matches so that uh, we can keep moving forward. Welcome everybody who, who's just joining. I'm just explaining the boardwalk uh, program, how it, how it works. And we're just about to get started with our main content here. So participants have been weighing in on the program. They've said that they'd like to be a not-for-profit board director for a lot of reasons, to, for their network, uh, to elaborate on their expertise, to elevate their leadership ability. They're saying that they want to take their leadership skills up a notch. Uh, they want to refine it. They want to hone their skills. They want to practice their skills. Um, you know, we have such great leaders in the community on all sorts of levels, but can we bring them into the not-for-profit sector uh, from a wide range? That's what we're trying to do. Many are interested in all sorts of you know, community causes and issues. Uh, the, this one individual mentioned youth development, family police and global mediation, and they completed their diploma in paralegal studies. So you see people are coming in with great um, unique backgrounds in terms of those types of skill sets that they bring. And others, you know, in for example, IT, risk management, cybersecurity, that's another one of our great participants who you know, let us know what, what they can do and what they can bring to the table. So really excited you know, to hear more from the participants today. I know there are many in, in our crowd that will be uh, 
um, you know, participating. And I really encourage you to, to leave your comments and there will be an opportunity to get your thoughts as well. And you know, another comment on, on uh, skill development and some of this individual has a background in, in commerce and really uh, looking at how they can bring their, their diverse experience from abroad and get an understanding of the Canadian culture as well. It's fantastic. Thank you so much for all the participants who have shared feedback through the program so far, and we'll be continuing to uh, amplify your voices in this. So the idea basically is Boardwalk brings people together to get more skilled volunteers, to in increase inclusion, uh, to bring skills to the table and let people show the skills they have as well as uh, develop them further. And then it bridges a gap, uh, the common gap that has been existing for a long time that's uh, sort of made the not-for-profit sector sort of mystified to the community. The community at large may not know how valuable uh, our not-for-profit sector is and how they can um, participate in it right here at home in Peel region. So this is something that we are always trying to demystify, uh, but you know, serving on a board and bringing skills-based volunteering to the table is what will really help us in this recovery process. So we are thinking that's what we're aiming to do. I'm going to hand things over to our, our moderator. Uh, we've got a fantastic uh, moderator for you. Shaminda Pereira is involved with the not-for-profit sector and has been since 2011. He's a strong supporter of diversity and inclusion. With over 18 years of experience in all aspects of adult learning, he is a learning and development strategist. He's our manager of learning and resource development at Volunteer BC and leads the Learning Center. And he's also the first vice president of the Mississauga Cooksville Lions Club. So uh, thanks, Jaminda. Uh, floor is yours. I'm very excited for the next couple of segments that uh, you're going to cover, which I think uh, everybody will enjoy uh, participating in. Thank you for that introduction, Sean, and thank you very much uh, to everybody who's participating on the uh, expo today. Um, like I'll bounce off from where Sean mentioned about, you know, what participants are saying and their experience. Uh, so in the past couple of uh, months, the participants have been taken through uh, various learning activities. One of them is a major course called the Not-for-Profit Board Essentials. Generally, this uh, course is offered to uh, the social purpose organizations in Peel, uh, whether they want their boards to start off uh, with, uh, with that particular training as onboarding or whether they want the boards to take on a refresher. So the same training is, uh, the same e-learning module is given to the participants. Uh, like Sean mentioned, they were going through, you know, the roles and the responsibilities, what are policies and bylaws and, you know, the, the parliamentary procedures during a, a board meeting and, uh, you know, strategic planning and various topics, almost uh, seven um, mini chapters. Uh, from there, every week they were going through a few learning, uh, mini learning uh, activities where we bring out uh, things that where organizations expect from a board member and how being a board member builds the capacity of organizations. So learning that are related to bringing those ideas forward. And also, uh, you know, they've been given the opportunity to observe uh, board meetings. So in October and in November during volunteer MBC, uh, you know, board meet live board meetings, they were observing how a board meeting is actually run. And uh, many of them came back with, uh, you know, appreciating that experiential component in the training. Um, so I'm going to start off uh, actually bringing the participants' voices out. Sean, if you can move to the next slide. Yes. So let me throw this question to all the participants online today, like all the boardwalk, boardwalk participants. Um, going through the training, going through the board observation, what valuable lessons have you learned so far? Uh, as a boardwalk participant and in uh, becoming a board member. Uh, you can type into the chat box or you, you can even, you know, unmute yourself and uh, let, speak up, uh, you know, in the forum. I know some of our new colleagues have been going through the boardwalk training as well. You could share your experience too. It's not only for those out of the organization. You can share as well. So Love T says the importance, oops, I lost that, uh, says the importance of diverse voices represented at the table. So you are you're talking about your experience at one of the board meetings. Thank you very much, Love. Anybody else who wants to share their experience? Uh, we can take about two, three uh, statements or feedback. 
Subhangi says lessons on governance on board dynamics and importance of uh, diversity. Yeah, and diversity, equity, and inclusion is sort of the foundation of our boardwalk program. So, um, Team Volunteer MBC, we are succeeding in our objectives. Sarah says the structure of the board and how individual strengths can help empower the organization. Uh, you bring up a good point, uh, Sarah, that when you're volunteering with an organization, whether you're volunteering in a board capacity or in an in operational capacity, and especially when you're giving your expertise uh, as a board member, what you're doing is you're actually building the capacity of the organization, which otherwise the organization would have to either find funding and spend on hiring consultants for that particular expertise, but also it's the, the leadership and the community networks that the board boards bring. And you may hear about uh, these points uh, when we move into the you know board member insights panel. Rehab says, I learned the importance of board members to an organization and how much they could contribute to its growth. Thank you, Rehab. So um, thank you very much to the participants who chimed in. Uh, next, we're moving into uh, one of the major segments of the session today where we want to uh, give the board work participants an idea of um, you know, what it means to be a board member, but coming from the experience of the board members themselves. So to give, bring you those valuable insights, we have an expert panel here today. Please allow me to introduce them. Uh, first, we have Diane Jones. Diane is the vice chair of Community Doe, as well as for Community Doe, the vice chair of the Governance and Nominating Committee, and sits on the Strategic Planning Committee. By profession, Diane is uh, into uh, consulting and training. Dan, thank you very much for being here, giving a uh, you know, few hours of your uh, evening to volunteer MBC today. Next up, we, you're welcome, Dan. Next up, we have John Digby, president of Peel's Children's Aid Foundation. John has extensive experience as a board director, uh, including 21 years with the Rotary Club of Brampton, uh, the director of International Youth Exchange, and also the director of service and uh, projects for the Rotary Club. And also six years as a board director with Brampton and uh, Br Brampton and Calden Community Foundation. As far as committees of boards go, John is involved with Right to Conquer Cancer, Osla Foundation, Princess Margaret Foundation Golf Tournament Fundraiser. By profession, John is in the banking industry, employed at RBC. Uh, next up, we have welcome, John. Next time we have Kavita Bagat. Kavita, are you online? Kavita will be joining us, but I will still introduce her. Uh, she is the board director of Volunteer MBC and the chair of our fund development committee. Kavita also sits on the nominating and governance committee. By profession, Kavita is a certified family law specialist. And the fourth and final member of our panel is none other than Corinne Strong. In terms of this panel, Corinne will share her insights as a board member. Um, her board experience, again extensive, she's the co-chair of Volunteer Centre Council of Volunteer Canada. And for the council, she's also the chair of the council's working group on advocacy and sustainability. She's the current chair, board chair of Calden Parent Child Centre. She is in the leadership team as well as a past chair of the Ontario Volunteer Centre Network. She is the current board secretary and chair of the nominating and governance committee of Community Door Services Network. She is the past chair and past gala chair gala committee of uh, Calden Community Services. So, thank you for joining us uh, today during this evening, uh, panelist and. Uh, I'm starting off with a question that is a little bit personal. In other words, um, I would say as the current board directors and of course some of you are officers of the boards, uh, we would love it if you could uh, share how you had benefited through the experience on being on a not-for-profit board. And can I uh, first invite Diane to uh, uh, share your insights and your experience with us? 
Excellent, and thank you so much everybody for having me here today. Um, I'm excited to talk to all of you and congratulations on each and every single one of you have taken your first step by uh, joining up with this board program. So well done and happy to answer questions as we go. So I come from a background of business. I've been a executive leader for three years in business. But there's always this hankering of how could I serve my community? So I was introduced to Community Door Network Services in 2019 and the moment I joined up with the board it suddenly clicked for me I went oh my gosh this is how I can serve back to the community I'd done donations and volunteering and that sort of thing but where could I really serve in a strategic and impactful meaningful way and the community door network services is a great way for me to do that but I would say being a community um a board member has been a two way street as much as I've been able to give to the board. I have received so much in return. I mean, I came from the business world where it was quarterly earnings, the share price, your shareholders ran your day. When you join a nonprofit, it's a very different feel. And I have learned so much about the nonprofit world and I've met people who have a common vision, a common goal and a common passion. And what a great group of people to work with versus when you're in the business world, you're working with everybody who's out for, uh, for, 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 the, for the business. So I would say I have gained a lot. Um, in learning everything I need to know, not everything, I'm learning a lot about the nonprofit world. Um, and personally, I've grown and feel that I've been able to serve in a way that I wasn't able to serve just as a volunteer or providing donations. So I'd say that in a short answer. Thank you, Dan. And uh, through your experience, you did highlight, uh, you know, the, the value is you learn for yourself as well. Um, you, know, you may be recruited to a board, like all board members may be recruited to a board because of your uh, you know, community influence or the expertise you bring because of your professional backgrounds. And you give all of yourself and your expertise to the organization. But in turn, we, you as board members to learn on you know, uh, uh, either learning new skills as leaders or even honing in on your you know, exemplary leadership skills that you already have. Uh, John, can I ask you to uh, share your experience uh, as next? Certainly. Thanks, Shamita. And uh, thank you, Diane, for sharing that. I, I think very similar to Diane, I've, I've been part of the financial services industry probably for about 39 years. And I think at the end of the day, um, being part of uh, community is, is very important. And then being part of um, uh, probably the Peel community in the last 45 years, I've had and been privileged to be part of uh, probably three or four boards and multiple um, committees throughout the GTA. Um, and I think very similar to Diane, I think, you know, we, we have the ability to um, network and give back in ways that are very strong because of the network we have. And I think the ability to volunteer and be on boards, not-for-profit boards, um, uh, we integrate um, our, our competencies and our abilities to connect other leaders um, that can make a difference in our community. So I, I think, simple and short, I, I, it, it, um, it's incredible um, value and honor to be part of a board. And I've been part of the Peel Children's Aid Foundation for the last eight years and just recently um, um, on as a chair and president for the uh, foundation. Um, so I, I think for all those that are part of um, this, um, uh, boardwalk experience. Um, you will continue to make a difference in everything you do and, and, and being in a not-for-profit, um, there's so many individuals out there that need your support. So um, I think that experience that we give um, benefits uh, many people. Thank you very much for uh, highlighting that point, uh, John. Uh, it's, uh, you know, it's not only about you supporting the organization, but also you're supporting an organization that is ultimately serving the members of the community and in turn so right. that the community can give back to all of us again. Uh, Kavita, welcome to the panel. We have just started the panel discussion. I will uh, go to uh, Corinne next and then come back to you and I'll explain to you, uh, you know, the discussion point we are on as well. Uh, Corinne, can I give you the next opportunity? 
Yes, thank you, Shaminda. So I, for me, this is a little bit of a, a unique opportunity because I'm, I'm kind of coming from both angles. Um, but for me, when I first um, joined a board, which was the Caledon Community Services Board, um, it, it for me, it was trying to bring my 30 years experience in, in senior management from the corporate sector and applying that um, you know, to, towards um, an organization. And I had been volunteering for many, many years, but it was my first board experience. And the way it has really benefited me, I have to be very honest, when I first joined a board, for me, governance specifically, I love the strategy and, and all that, but governance specifically was um, probably my least favorite of everything uh, on the board until I really started to understand what the importance is of governance and um, you know how much I have been able to learn over the years. And I've become actually really passionate about governance and policies and and that never ever was the case in the in the beginning. So for those of you who, you know, maybe struggling a little bit with, you know, the 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 actual governance and the the fiscal responsibility. Um, it is a hugely important component of of um, of the organizations. And over the years, I can tell you that uh, for me, um, it, that has now become my passion. But in addition to that. I'm also extremely passionate about seeing the uh, boards uh, reflected and hearing the voices of the community on boards across Peel. And unfortunately, in the nonprofit sector, I'm not sure if people are familiar, but Rad Radna Omnivar, um, she uh, was, um, uh, you know, responsible for releasing a, a rather poignant report about the lack of diversity, and she was specifically talking about nonprofit boards across um, across Canada, and uh, and that's certainly the case in Peel as well. And network. from an, an executive director perspective. Mm -hmm. Um, being able to work with a board that is so diverse, that brings absolutely the skill sets, but also brings that unique, um, you know, perspective of the community. Um, it, it is so important because ultimately your programs and the clients that you serve need to be heard. And if it's through, um, you know, the strategic initiatives, I think that is just incredibly important. And I really applaud all the um, boardwalk participants. I've uh, had the opportunity to meet a few of you now uh, through our last couple of board meetings. And I'm just absolutely thrilled with the skill sets that you can bring to organizations. And I can't wait uh, to be able to connect you to a role that's both beneficial to you, but also uh, to the organization. Thank you, Karin. Um, Kavita, so to explain a little bit what we've been doing so far, uh, we've gone through the introductions, and right now we are on the first question in the board pa insights panel discussion. Uh, the question is, uh, you know, as current director of boards and also some of you are serving as officers you know personally how have you benefited from being on not-for-profit boards um i think i approached this a little differently from the other speakers or panelists today because um you know i do i i have a corporation of my own i have a business of my own so as a board director this is purely a volunteer position for me, right? So I'll be uh, very blunt and honest and candid uh, with respect to this. When I decided to commit to joining a board, uh, you know, there were a couple of different factors that motivated me on a personal level. I knew that if I have to get to the next step in my career, um, I need to start giving back. And even though I was giving back on an informal basis, I need to do that on a formal basis. And the formal basis will get you that recognition where you can get to the next step of your career. And you want to be seen for that as well. So being very candid, 
that was the reason for it as well. Have I been giving back always? Yes, but I needed that official title, so to say, to make it known that I was indeed contributing as well, because unfortunately you can do whatever you want, but you need that recognition as well at the end of the day, right? Um, I love being on the board because it gives me a visual into the needs that exist in the community and contributing towards it. So, you know, I've I I'm a family law lawyer, so I get to deal on a one on one basis with clients from different backgrounds, uh, those who have money, those who don't have money, those who make cash income, um, those who are struggling on the fringes, immigrants, criminals, whatever it might be. Uh, but, you know, approaching this and seeing how else I can give back uh, in that capacity was something that definitely motivated me. Um, this is me on a professional level and this is me on a personal level. Uh, and bringing that expertise to a not-for-profit uh, definitely was something that uh, motivated me more than anything. What I love is the networking and uh, meeting amazing professionals. I mean, um, you know, I've gotten to meet uh, Sean, I've, got, I've gotten to meet Shaminda, Kareen. I mean, the, these people are inspirations for me. They've dedicated their life to the not-for-profit sector and they're so passionate about it. And I only contribute, I don't know, 2% of my time in comparison to what they do. Uh, but I love it, the networking and all that I can learn from them um, and bringing it back to my profession and speaking about it and uh, learning more about what not-for-profits do. Um, no matter which social event it is, I find that always I'm always making a pitch for the not-for-profits. I'm always talking more and more to say, guys, can you give back? Can you volunteer? Because there is a need for it, right? So uh, it's come to the point where my husband will say, stop begging. <laughs> But that's just how life rolls, right? So I love it. I absolutely love it. Thank you, Kavita. And uh, throughout uh, what you shared, there was a theme that was running where you sort of highlighted the fact that you were getting to know the people in the community by being part of the board. And sometimes the causes, we know certain social issues exist, but you only know the extent of it is when you get into the not-for-profit board and also serve in a strategic capacity. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, the next question is about uh, the crux of the boardwalk program. It's about diversity, equity, and inclusion. Uh, at Volunteer MBC, I know coming all the way down from Kareen, uh, from our board and from Kareen and everyone, all of my team members, we strongly advocate for diversity, equity, and inclusion. I think every organization should represent the community it serves. Uh, can you share with us, you know, what have your organization done in terms of the effort to bring in diversity, equity and inclusion into your board composition and into your board, uh, you know, environment? Um, uh, Karin, can I throw that question at you first? Sure. So I can um, reference uh, the organization where I that I chair, the Caledon Parent Child Center. So one of their major strategic initiatives is to really do a deep dive in DNI. So they created a task force, and uh, they're um, they've engaged a consultant and the board because they feel very strongly that it needs to be. Uh, coming from the board level and drill it down to throughout the organization because if it it's the other way around it, it will never work so they've uh, they've been been very um, engaged in that work and um, um, making good inroads as well um, so we've we've actually had a board retreat on the topic and we had uh, a keynote speaker that uh, guided us throughout um, that that entire morning and again it was a real learning opportunity for me but also from uh, a volunteer NBC perspective uh, we also have a social inclusion committee um, that um, we it used to be an ambassador committee and uh, we changed it into social including inclusion but also still a little bit of an ambassador committee um, because um, we feel very strongly, and it's in the terms of reference that again, um, you know, it's it's ex extremely important yeah, to, uh, to have so the board. The, 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 the and then have everyone else really understand, um, you know, where um, 
um, where they can make inroads of what they can do so that we all throughout the organization really walk the talk. Thank you, Corinne. Uh, Diane, can I invite you next to respond to that uh, statement I made? Yes, thank you. And I wish I could say the community door have done as much as the other board you sit on, Corinne. It sounds like you've really taken great strides in um, D, uh, D and I um, pulling it in there. So I'm just going to start off and tell you a little bit of a personal story myself with regard to this. So I chose myself to immigrate from to Canada from South Africa. And if anybody knows anything about South Africa, that's a country with a very dark and ugly history with regard to treating and respecting all humans equally. And that's the reason why I decided to immigrate to Canada. I didn't want to be part of that. So that really leaves with me the topic of diversity, equity and inclusion is just so damn close to my heart. It's down to my core. It's down to who I am as an individual. It's down to me and my ethical values. Um, so, so with, with that, um, I live in Brampton. I live part of Peel. I work with Community Door on a volunteer basis. Um, we represent and service a number of different um, uh, communities within Peel, different organizations within Peel. And we all know that it's an extremely diverse region. I mean, if you look at the 2016 census, it will tell you that we have, you know, the highest immigrant population, the highest vis visible minority population in the GTA. So we have a huge diverse population. And I am so strong of the belief that your not only your board, but your workplace, your employees, everything you do should reflect the community and the people you serve. And, you know, Karina, I'd love to see that report you reference because I would agree 100% as I start to look on websites and look at the board members of all these communities, of all these organizations that are serving our community, and I want to go, what are we doing? We're not doing what we should be. So, Again, a round of applause to um, Volunteer NBC for pulling together a program like this where we can develop people from our community, from our grassroots, who we can grow into leaders within our organizations. So kudos, and I'm so excited to hopefully at some state meet, stage meet some of the participants. So with that all being said, I mean, we, we all need to, as um, as boards in the nonprofit sector, but also companies take a, a hard look in the mirror and we need to reflect and adjust. So how do you go about this? And for me, because I'm very much a human person, for me, this starts with conversations. So the retreat and the getaway you had, Corinne, where you had somebody facilitate those conversations is exactly where it starts. It starts with that. It starts with an understanding. Then it starts with the reality checks. Then and also for a lot of business people, you have to tie in. Why does it make sense from a business and a profit standpoint to reflect your your community. And there's so many reasons why and so many business cases why it does. For us in the nonprofit sector, we're not measured on that, but it absolutely makes sense that we should be in the mindset so we can walk the talk. So some steps you can take and which we've started at Community Door, and quite frankly, under the guidance of Corinne, um, we creating a statement on our website, but we all feel that a statement is empty unless we really live it, breathe it, talk it, do it. So we've developed a board of directors skills and diversity matrix so we can take that hard look in the mirror, do that reality check, and then be very conscious in our recruitment efforts of future board members. So we typically, we would probably post on LinkedIn or on volunteer MB MBC site, but maybe we need to go to places where we can get people who are interested in serving the community, who represent the community. So we've started this, but at, at the end of the day we're just at the ground floor we're, we're right at the beginning with the conversations but to me it's really about that it's the buy-in and we've got to get everybody there so thank you for that and um, you know again I say I look forward to speaking to all these participants to seeing how you want to bring your skills your experiences and contribute um, to represent the community we serve so hopefully that gives you enough <laughs> Thank you, Dan. And you're also, uh, um, you know, alluding to the main objective of the expert today, you know, sharing on where the board positions exist. So participants, 
community do is one place that you can look at. Uh, thank you, Diane. John, can I invite you to answer the question next? Absolutely, thank you. And yeah, Diane, incredible. I, I think similar to Diane, I came to this country as an immigrant uh, from Bombay, India, uh, uh, many years ago. And, and I think when I look at the time we came to this country in the 60s, 70s, um, incredible amount of, of um, uh, racism that took place then. And I think still to this day, there's a lot of that that takes place in, in our environment. But I think we've come a long way in, in positioning and, and being strong in how to speak up and, and have that ability to make a difference to multiple um, races and cultures in our environment. Um, as, as the chair with uh, Peel Children's Aid Foundation, um, our board works uh, alongside with the Peel Children's Aid Society um, and partners in the community to make sure that, um, that uh, the current and prospective board members are committed to uh, DNI, DNI, DNI uh, I strategy and continuous learning. And I think there's a lot of work to do, but I think as board members with the foundation, as well as board members and, and um, staff with the Peel Children's Aid Society, we, it's a continuous learning. Um, the Peel uh, Children's Aid Society uh, has been very proud to be strong in working relationships with diverse communities in the Peel region. Um, we continue to be engaged with a lot of collaboration with business partners, um, who are working with us to develop uh, many cultural um, and appropriate programs that are going to make a difference to diversity and inclusion uh, in Peel. Um, we, uh, I guess I can, I can say that we appreciate and celebrate the diversity at all levels uh, of organizations within our board. Um, and we're grateful for workplace diversity that represents our community and both the CAS as well as the, our foundation has a long history of leadership in diversity, equity, and inclusion, and working with community partners to confront racism and oppression with marginalized communities. Um, yet, I think similar to what Diana says, Diane says we, we've got a lot of work to be done uh, going forward. Um, when we look at Peel, Peel has the lowest number of children in per capita of the CAS in Ontario, and notably, notably the lowest number of black children in care per capita. Um, 90, 99% of our work is with children, youth, and families within their own homes, and 84% and, uh, um, has an overall client satisfaction. So we continue to position that, that diversity and inclusion in the staff that are hired through the CAS, as well as the board members that are part of um, the Peel Children's Aid Foundation. Um, I guess our board and staff with the, the, the foundation, you know, we continue to listen and work together to ensure that we're committed to um, the DEI anti racism and anti black racism um, that informs everything that we do. Um, so I, I, I think at the end of the day, just um, wanting to listen to and, and, you know, have the participant reach out to us. Um, I, I think uh, that experience and that ability to understand what's continuing to take place, not only in Peel, but I think in, in, in Canada is, is um, a lot of work to be done, but um, it, it's, I think it's organizations like Volunteer MBS, that uh, NBC, that, that continue to make that difference in positioning and speaking out for, for the ability to have individuals make a difference. Uh, in this area. Thank you very much, John. Uh, Diane, you mentioned conversations need to start, and John, you mentioned that we need to listen. When it comes to work in DEI, I think, uh, you know, listening to those who are affected by various issues and, uh, you know, starting, at least starting with the conversations is important. Kavita, I, whenever the other panelists spoke, I heard, I saw you, you know, sort of, uh, that it was resonating with you. How about you, Kavita? What do you feel about this? So I, um, I think I need to start with, you know, perhaps an analogy um, that I tend to use is when you're constructing a house, it uh, requires people from various backgrounds, right? You need a plumber, you need an electrician, you need 
a contractor, you need somebody who's putting the plans together. And to me, that's just what diversity is in a not-for-profit board, simply put, because you have to be able to look at things from multiple angles, from a different insight and from a different experience, right? Oftentimes we mistake diversity for simply issues related to race, but that's not how I perceive diversity and that's not how you ought to perceive it. Um, I know when I was on the board of Caledon uh, Parent and Child Center, I was working on the DEI principles, statement of principles, and I was asked to define diversity. Um, and I pretty much rewrote everything because to me it just wasn't enough. And I was providing for age, ethnicity, gender, skills, abilities, experience, competencies, philosophies, life experiences, race, religion, sexual orientation. There's so much to it. And each of those contribute in some way, shape or form to the decisions we help make and our contributions as well, right? So I think we first need to understand the meaning of diversity. Um, I don't necessarily feel we can define it because it's just way too vast. I think we can uh, kind of have a little bit of a template or use certain words, but the definition is constantly going to change. And what requires more focus in terms of diversity is constantly going to change, right? So today it could be that uh, the black community requires more assistance from us. Tomorrow it could be something else. So, you know, we, we had LGBTQ issues that we were dealing with last year. Uh, so every year, Every single time there's somebody who's going to need more assistance than the other, but that doesn't mean that we ignore the rest of the population. We have to be mindful of them as well, uh, but that to me is the key. So um, in terms of the organization's efforts to establish, a, I, I, I'll give you an example with Volunteer MBC. Uh, Sean is the resident, uh, you know, the e learning person and when I joined Volunteer MBC I had to mandatorily undergo a course um, and I, I took it and um, you know I was myself shocked about how ignorant I was and there were questions in it about um, diversity and one of the questions was um, you know, there's a person on a wheelchair who enters a store. How would you assist them? Um, and my mind never went to that. I was horrified. I was like, my God, why have I never thought about this? That things ought to be at a lower level for it to be accessible for them to see the prices of things and remove things from a hanger, right? Like I was just like, oh God, I am ignorant. <laughs> So it required a massive uh, viewpoint change for me. Um, from a lawyer's perspective, uh, I will tell you that I am ashamed to say that the Law Society of Ontario tried to put forward a statement of principles acknowledging diversity and inclusion. Um, and unfortunately, um, Fellow lawyers decided that they don't have to commit to it and sign a statement of principles to that effect, uh, which was uh, unfortunate. And we are trying again to resurrect it. Hopefully this year around, we will be able to accomplish something. Essentially, lawyers felt we can regulate ourselves. I disagree. I think there is definitely a lot of discrimination and we need to provide for it. But uh, I am ashamed and I hope to God that we can fix it at some point of time. But when you're on a board, that's when you have the opportunity to speak. So yes, it's a lot more work for us and a lot of commitment. But if you don't you know, speak up, you're never going to be able to change change things. The next two questions, I'm going to uh, couple it together because it's uh, very similar in its nature. Uh, it's about the board's relationship with staff. Uh, one of them is the board's relationship with the executive director or chief executive officer. And the other is the board's relationship with the leaders of volunteers of that organization, whether they are, uh, you know, as a position title, whether it's a volunteer coordinator, volunteer manager, or director of volunteers. Uh, I believe volunteer engagement should be a big discussion point at the strategic table whenever the opportunity presents itself. So from the panelists, and uh, 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 John, I'm going to uh, invite you first to answer the question where, okay. What do you feel about, uh, you know, like what should the relationship be like between the board and the executive director? And also in your organizations, how much of 
um, prominence have you given to the leader of volunteer or the volunteer manager in terms of uh, you know being engaged with uh, board recruitment or the strategic planning uh, the, the sessions uh, during your board activities? Super. Thanks, Shamida. Um, yeah, you know, at, at the end of the day, um, it's a critical component to success and transparency for uh, any not-for-profit organization. Um, what, what specifically makes an effective board chair, executive director term, team? Board chairs um, typically have very short terms. And so if the relationship is that real value, um, executive directors and their chairs and directors need to agree um, what is what is together should pay most attention and try to bond quickly. Um, because when you look at the shorter terms, I think the ability to work together and make a difference in what needs to be done at that time frame is very important. Uh, personalities play um, a role for sure, but beyond this, what helps? Um, I feel there's four things. Um, clarity on the respective roles. Um, so whether it's through business development, whether it's through recruitment of chairs and volunteers, um, the right amount of interaction between individuals. And, you know, I'm uh, looking at the panel here, we've got very diverse competencies, right from, you know, corporate, legal, uh, financial, et cetera. Um, and the right kind of interactions, uh, an agenda to, to guide them, to make sure that they're on track and, and strategies, in, strategies in place. Um, and, then, and then I think like anything uh, similar to family, the trust and building of support is very important. Um, so uh, being, being uh, an effective board chair, you have to continue to make sure that you're communicating that in a very constructive and transparent way. Um, the board chair of, of, of any head of uh, a chair um, oversees the executive director, um, especially in our case. So the executive director in a non-for-profit operational um, uh, helps shape and realize uh, sort of the organization's mission statement or strategy that's in place. Um, and most, most executive directors have a job description outlying their duties and responsibilities. And I think that's very important to make sure that there's um, a mandate. So similar to uh, having a job, you know, we've got a mandate and you have to make sure that, that you continue to position that mandate and what you're doing to, to meet those expectations. So not-for-profit and boards are the same, same way, right? There's gotta be that ability to continue to make sure that there's clarity in what you do. Um, and then some sources uh, suggest that board chair and, and ED should meet at least touch base weekly or bi-weekly. Bi um, so there's got to be interaction depending on the circumstances facing the organization. And for each one of them, um, there's got to be clarity. So I, I think continued ability to have that communication with uh, board members, um, uh, both uh, uh, within the board and and staff that are part of the, the organization thank you john uh dan how do you look at these relationships between the ed and the board and also the uh leaders of volunteers being part of the strategic planning table so my my experience this is my first board experience non-profit board experience and and it's interesting because we don't have an executive director or ceo we have a board chair and we have one team member who works in the in the, our a non-profit so we have a board that really works collaboratively collaboratively with one person so the way i looked at this question is that we all hold each other accountable at the board level so the one thing and i'll only focus on one thing because um uh, uh, john you handled all the other pieces so well in terms of really how everything should go. But the one thing I will focus on is an alignment. And it doesn't matter whether it's a team member, whether it's the board, whether it's the, the executive um, director or the, or the CEO, it's an alignment on what you're doing. And for those of us who have been in the business world, we know how damn difficult it is to get alignment just on any kind of business strategy. So I'm actually fascinated when I sit on the community door board, how aligned everybody is. And it goes back 
back to, I think everybody has the same mission at heart. Everybody wants to serve and do the better of the greater good. So when you've got that as your foundation, you talk about building a house, there's the foundation for the house before you bring in the diversity of people. But if you've got that foundation going and everybody can be aligned, then holding each other accountable becomes very important. And I don't think that personally, I don't think that's just the, result, the role of the board chair or the role of the executive director. It's a combined accountability. So it's the alignment, the word of alignment, using that as your foundation is what I would say, focus on only because I haven't had the experience. If I had the experience, I could probably talk a little bit more to it. The other question about the volunteer engagement, um, you know, the backbone of most nonprofits are your volunteers. And that's the army, the foot soldiers who are out there doing so much of the work. So I would say it would baffle me if any nonprofit board would talk about the strategic direction of their organization and how they're going to serve their community without including whoever heads up your volunteer recruitment, whoever's involved in your volunteer. It would baffle me. Um, and if, if we did volunteer as a community door, um, I would be sure to have them sit at our table. We don't. But for anybody who's sort of going down this path of nonprofit, um, you know, make sure that when you jump into a board, you ask that question. Does the person who's involved with engagement and recruitment of volunteers sit on your board and have a voice in the table in terms of the strategic direction of this um, particular organization? So that's all I have to say on that. Thank you, Diane. And as you say that, it's a good segue for me to uh, give Corinne the opportunity to answer that question. Yeah, and, and thank you so much, Diane. And you, you could be a commercial for volunteer in BC. <laughs> Honestly, I mean, we we would love to. And then thank goodness we are recording this because uh, to be very honest, so many nonprofit organizations, um, volunteer leadership, leadership, uh, like leaders of volunteers is one of the last considerations and one of the first positions to to go in an organization. So it's it's really um, a shame um, because, as you put it so eloquently, um, you know nothing can be done in a nonprofit without those volunteers supporting you. We've seen it throughout the pandemic. We saw it before. Um, you know, and and even the, the the very existence of nonprofits would not be there because they need a board of directors and they're all volunteers and giving their time. So, um, but for me, it, it goes to something that is very much related to what Diane was saying. And so one of the key things when, um, when we interview um, candidates, potential candidates, is the alignment with the passion and is the passion there for the mission and vision of the organization. And that needs to be throughout the organization. It, you know, they all need to be singing from the same song sheet, if you will. Um, if that passion isn't there, then it's going to be very, very difficult for a board chair and, um, you know, a board president, board chair, and an executive director and staff, um, you know, to to really be able to communicate and and make make headways and 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 make a difference in the community. Um, that passion, you know, is one of the key elements, quite frankly, that we ask for, um, you know, is, is the passion there for volunteering? And, you know, I'm a little bit coming from a prejudiced perspective because for, all, for us, it's all about volunteering and because volunteers matter. And, um, um, it, but, but I think, you know, typically in an organization, um, you know, the, the only way that board, uh, com uh, board directors or committee members interact with staff is via committee work, right? Um, otherwise, they go through the executive director. And, and so if that element isn't there where everybody, as Diane said, is aligned, um, you know, to, to the strategy, to the mission and the vision, then it, it's going to be really, really difficult to make any headway. And, and so for me, it, it, that really is what it boils down to. And, and just going back to a little bit earlier, um, you know, networking um, is a huge part of that. And when you're 
passionate about, you know, when I came to Canada, I, I was a newcomer as well. And, and I, I was very young. I was a young bride and, and coming here. And for me, that networking that I was able to get through volunteering and then later through board experiences has been so, so incredibly beneficial. And, and but it's really difficult to do that if, if the passion isn't there and if you're not aligned with, with each other. So that's uh, for me, one of the biggest things. Thank you, Corinne. Um, Kavita, you now have the opportunity to round everything up in uh, conclusion of the uh, you know, board insights segment. Um, what do you feel about, uh, you know, the relationship between boards and executive directors and also giving prominence to the leaders of volunteers in the strategic uh, table? I think uh, sometimes I feel that it's easiest to explain by way of examples of what I have experienced personally. Um, I was uh, asked to join a board uh, for a lawyers mediators organization, and I served on the board for a good part of two years. And my contribution to the board was significant, but I eventually chose to leave despite the fact that I would have ended up becoming the president of that board because I just thought that uh, my compatibility with the executive director was simply lacking. Um, I had an executive director who was extremely overpowering um, and wanted to take over all tasks and all decision making and uh, none of the board, we, we had a constant turnaround of board members um, and the volunteers simply did not stay as long as well. Like it was just way too much work. So I start with that and saying, I think you have to figure out if you're the right fit for the organization, right? Um, to go to the next example of uh, me serving on the board of Caledon Parent and Child, uh, Kareen personally recruited me uh, so she reached out to me on LinkedIn, and that speaks to volunteer engagement and volunteer recruitment. Um, she, I guess, spoke about me to other people, identified me and reached out to me to say I would be the right fit for the board. Um, and I felt, OK, this is something that is intriguing, interesting, and it's very local because I do reside in Caledon and I do have young children. So it seemed like the right fit for me. Uh, but at some point I thought, what more am I contributing to that board? So when uh, Karina approached and said, would you like to join Volunteer MBC? I already had one on one interactions with her um, and it just felt like the vibe was just absolutely amazing. And to be honest, this board is I, I work, if I had to work with them on a full time basis, I would love to jump on board to do so. Uh, that's how exciting it would be. So, you know, you do have to find the right fit. And the, at the end of the day, everyone has to stay on in their own lane. Uh, but I think the executive director is kind of the glue that holds everyone together. Uh, it's always nice to receive an email from Kareen saying, I know you're doing a lot. If you want to step away from this, that's fine, which is nice because the guilt gets to you when you don't do too much, but the reverse is also true when you get that email saying, can you do this? But it always comes with that underlying, you know, so it's it's always nice to get that email for sure. So um, it, it just, uh, I don't know if that sums it up or complicates things, but I just had to give the different examples that I've had or experiences I've had with different boards. Thank you very much, Kavita. Uh, so board work participants, there you go. You we've learned a lot from the experts, uh, expert panel today, from the expertise as board members. Uh, Diane, John, Kavita, Karin, thank you very much for sharing your experience, your insights, and also what you feel it should be. Uh, because the when the board work participants, when the candidates graduate and when they are leaving and taking on leadership roles in organizations, they are now starting on the right note. And the right note, not only for them and the organization, but also the right note for the uh, community as well. Uh, and uh, hopefully that, you know, they will spread our uh, mission towards uh, bringing, including diversity, equity and inclusion as part of the culture of all uh, social purpose organizations. To the panelists, thank you very much for your time today. Sean, if you can move on to the next slide. Um, so the next segment is also uh, going to be discussion based uh, and we are going to ask our organizations who are on the call today to uh, sort of uh, exhibit their organizations, you know, board uh, board positions. 
uh, I will uh, present these uh, four questions to you. It's up on the screen. So as I like, you can raise your hand up, and then you can, uh, you know, uh, either touch on all four, uh, you know, points on the screen or even one. But uh, this is your opportunity to, uh, you know, share your board positions and who you feel is the ideal candidate. Because I, looking at the participants list, we have almost about twenty participants from the boardwalk program who are potential candidates come uh, January. Uh, but I also have, uh, um, like, we've also been, uh, you know, pr privileged enough for Leonie Beck, vice chair of Abbeville Calden, to say that she is willing to be, uh, you know, one of the uh, individuals who would like to present uh, the board positions. Leonie, are you on the call? Yes, I am. Can you hear me? I can hear you, Leonie, and th thank you very much for, you know, committing to uh, present this today. Uh, wonderful thanks a lot to um, your organization for inviting us um, to um, just tell you a little bit about Abbeyfield Caledon. Um, so I'm um, on the board of Abbeyfield Caledon and uh, we are a non-for-profit organization that provides um, housing uh, for seniors and it's non-for-profit housing for seniors. So. Um, we are located in the Caledon East area. So um, I just want to address the very first question and how crucial is board support to our organization? Well, I can tell you that Abbeyfield Caledon would not be able to exist without a volunteer board. And I think that goes to, for, to, for most nonprofit organizations, um, the concept of our organization functions on this premises that we get volunteers to serve on our board will not only serve on a governance level but also on an operational uh, level and um, when it comes to seeking um, board members um, we definitely look for people with the skill sets and competencies for each position. Now, um, when you think of running a non-profit seniors homes, um, we need people with all sorts of skills. Um, we need them um, with clinical training, like nurses and medical experience, legal, um, financial, um, board and governance um, experience, um, nutritional and science um, a background, a personnel management background to assist with the two staff that we have um, um, in, our, um, in our house and also social services, recreational um, who can um, engage with our seniors. So as you can see, um, one little organization that houses and serves 12 people need all sorts of skill sets and competencies to run the house um, on a non-for-profit basis. And I would just like to uh, let your um, students or your, I don't know if you call them students, but uh, those uh, that have partake, uh, partook in your, um, your learning know what um, the financial um, impact would be um, for serving um, on a non-for-profit board. If we were to, um, currently we charge our residents um, $1,925 per month to live um, in our home. And that provides them with the accommodation and also um, we provide them with the three meals a day. And um, if we did not have a volunteer board and we were at to pay staff to do some of those functions that I just mentioned, um, we would be charging those residents 3,500. That's what it would cost. So you can see uh, how um, serving on a board can impact the cost of providing housing for our seniors in our community. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lenny, and thank you very much for being up to this time because I know your personal time today. I really appreciate it. 
Uh, we open the segment to uh, any organization who's on the call today. Uh, you can uh, either type in or we prefer if you can, you know, open your camera and your mic and uh, let us know what positions you have and also, you know, the, the importance of a board member to your organization. Uh, my name is Ian Armstrong and I'm the chair of the board of directors for Caledon Community Services. Obviously, we're located in Caledon and um, we do a, a broad spectrum of uh, we provide a broad spectrum of services in the Caledon community. Um, we have we do um, PSW staffing at some of the um, support um, supported homes. We do ride programs, um, getting uh, Caledon's a, a broad community, and it allows people to economically or, um, uh, get to um, day programs and and um, and services that, essential services that they need. Um, we um, have youth programs for develop youth development programs for uh, job skills and job learning skills. We have a food bank. Um, we um, do adult and youth counseling. And we have a retail store, which um, allows us to turn um, reuse um, or resell uh, used clothing, um, and at the same time bring uh, bring funds in to support our programs. Um, what are we looking for? We're really looking. You know, we we want to have a diversified board. You know, you want someone. I hate to use the uh, the word. You you want someone that's old. You want someone that's young. You want. You know, people with diversified backgrounds. Um, you know, in, in order to represent your community, when you look at your community and you see people, those are the type of people we need on our boards to, 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 to that for that representation. Um, I, I guess the the, the overwhelming um, um, competency or quality that we want is is someone that wants to um, give their time to to make the community which we live in, uh, you know, a better place to live. So uh, um, I've been on the board for five or six years, but I've probably done community service most of my life. Um, I, I feel that, um, you know, I've been very blessed in, in this life and, and part of it's just giving back. But um, as um, Kavita said earlier, I mean, even though you volunteer because you're doing it for the, the, the goodness of your heart and you want to improve your community, you always end up picking up skills from the, from from that volunteer uh, service that that helps you move forward. Um, if if I hadn't volunteered for Calvin Community Services, I wouldn't know Kareen right now. So, so there's there's all types of benefits from volunteering. Um, Right now, we're lucky. You know, we've got a very diversified board uh, in terms of uh, skills and matrix. Um, we're we're really just looking for people that that are interested in our community and and, and want to contribute to make it better. Um, um, I think I think that's all I can say on, on what we're looking for. Um, as Kareem knows, it's always a struggle to uh, to to recruit. And, and it's also difficult to recruit because when we talk about diversity, we always look to recruit people that look look like us. You know, um, you know whether we expect them to have a button up shirt, we expect them to comb their hair, we expect them to have short hair. I mean, diverse diversifications uh, is all is none of those things. So um, we're looking for new directors, and, and we hope uh, if anyone would ever wants to reach out to me, I, I gladly uh, have a conversation with them and. Tell them a little bit more about our organization and, and, uh, and uh, see whether there's something that you can do for our organization. Thank you. Thank you, Ian. And to the participants of board, the Boardwalk program, um, once you hear about these organizations and also organizations who are being represented here today, uh, I will be and my team will be going through uh, the you know the request and we will field those questions and put back to the boardwalk participants during the uh, you know learning sessions so they can come back and uh, let us know which organizations or which positions that they would like to be engaged in so please do share if you have any positions and i can see ali canning your hand is up yes let me lower that quickly um thank you i'm um new um, to volunteer MBC, so I want to thank uh, Sean for and Shan for inviting me and it's been uh, a pleasure listening to everyone so thank you for your time 
Um, we're a nonprofit organization. We are based in Toronto, but we are we serve um, really the greater community. Um, we are focused on youth and education. Um, we want to see youth continue pursuing higher education, and our basically our tagline is making learning um, equitable and education accessible. And we do this through um, a lot of creating student-led initiatives um, where they can connect to other youth and mentor them and motivate them because um, we feel this youth, the voice needs to be heard. They're the future parent generation. They have related experience that uh, relatable experience for the younger generation and they can have the ear of the parents to help them raise their children uh, because the challenges the kids have today are very different from when I grew up. Um, we do have a board, but it's uh, not as active. So in the new year, we will be um, looking for new board members. And, um, you know, one of our challenges is finding that, you know, board that um, is a mix of different experiences, um, not only in diversity, but also embraces the youth. And, and so, you know, I, I want to put that out there. Anybody who's up for the challenge? of you know working with youth and um or has experience with that um we would love to do that we are a big partner of utm um we are focused on technology actually just to mention that's our biggest piece we are we refurbish computers to get them back out into the community because we know that is a key tool to accessing education and employment so you don't have to have tech skills just a willingness to be innovative and uh address some of the barriers that uh, uh, many youth and their families face today. Thank you. Thank you, Ali. And uh, to the organizations, uh, you'll be happy to know that uh, some of our board work participants are actually high school youth. We open the, like the program is created for uh, newcomer adults who would want to sort of, uh, you know, hone in on their leadership skills, understand what it means to be a board member. But also when we saw the new uh, the youth come in, we had we said we you know we were in conversation saying you know this is for adults, but we are open if you want to still continue. And the youth said yes, so we uh, you know opened it out because some of the organizations in the Peel community are youth led as well, and they do function just as much as an adult uh, you know group with uh, you know an executive team and so on. So we are really happy to see that in our board work uh, participants. Um, since no one else had sort of uh, raised their hand up or would want to share at the moment, uh, can I invite my colleague? Yes, Dan. Sorry, I don't want to dominate at all, but I didn't want to let this opportunity go by. So at Community Door, we actually work with a number of different nonprofits, but we house them, we provide this community hub space. So we are currently looking for people to add to our committees. And we're looking for specifically, so when we did our diversity and board skill matrix, we're looking specifically for financial experience because our current treasurer is going to be rotating off the board at some stage. So we need to start building some board strength. So looking for financial and accounting experience or commercial real estate experience. So if anybody's gone through the boardwalk program and has that functional experience in their background, we'd be very happy to chat with them. And thank you. Thank you, Jan. And actually when I was going through their profiles, many of them do have the finance background. So um, we may be able to connect someone from our candidate pool. That'd be fantastic. Thanks so much. You're welcome. Um, Robert, can I invite you to take uh, about five minutes and uh, show us how one can, how an organization can post their volunteer opportunities and also to the board work participants if they wish to directly apply to a board position where these positions uh, uh, you know, exist and how they can search for it. I'll give you five minutes, Robert. It's a rapid fire session. Used to that, Shaminda. Thank you very much. Uh, coincidentally, I just posted a link uh, in the chat to that will take you to the current uh, volunteer NBC um, <coughs> volunteer positions for for board membership uh, on our website. And volunteer NBC, uh, as I hope most of you know. Uh, our core, our core uh, mandate is to match 
volunteers to uh, meaningful and suitable volunteering positions. And a subset of that, of course, is membership on a board. And it is a separate, rather unique uh, subset of, of the general sort of uh, opportunities that are available uh, on, at least on our website. The interesting thing about volunteer, uh, volunteer board positions is that certainly of late, uh, organizations uh, are looking for specific skill sets. And for example, that would include something as uh, timely as human resources, uh, aside from the traditional sort of skill sets that are sought involving uh, finance, uh, uh, general not-for-profit uh, governance, uh, and again, specific uh, skills uh, such as Leon a had has identified, for example, uh, as uh, part of Abbey Field's needs. So, really, how you access uh, us is, of course, through our website, and you don't have to have a, a volunteer profile to do so. But it is helpful uh, to, for example, create a profile confidentially, and it's and for volunteers, it's free, in order to uh, um, be able to. Uh, be facilitated in respect to uh, getting connected to the volunteer positions, board board positions that are, are available. And they're changing all the time. And uh, I think someone also alluded, alluded to the fact that there, in, in essence, is a high, high season for, for board activity, depending upon, of course, how many organizations have a common year end. The, the flip side of it is posting a, a volunteer board position, and, and that's that's really where uh, I'm involved. And in order to do that, you wouldn't necessarily have to uh, become a member of Volunteer NBC, and there are various levels of membership uh, that are available. But for the most part, if you sign on as a member, you're you're able to submit a volunteer position or a volunteering opportunity. And uh, we have a, an extensive network uh, of, of volunteers who, uh, depending upon their areas of interest and their preferences, will be exposed to those opportunities. And indeed, the uh, volunteering opportunities are available to the public at large. You don't have to be a, a, a client of Volunteer NBC to see them. So, in essence, uh, we are we are truly the volunteer center and a network for uh, getting your quote unquote advertising out to the to the general public. So uh, that's that's that that in a nutshell, I hope is is representative of of what we do. And with that, I hand over the mic to my colleague Sean. Uh, I would like to personally thank the panelists uh, from the Board Insights as well as those who uh, spoke up about the organization positions. Robert, thank you very much for showing how one can post an opportunity and one can, uh, you know, apply to a board member position, whether it's a board member position, committee position, or a strategic leadership position in an organization. Thank you very much, everyone. And Sean, over to you. Wow, that was fantastic. Uh, thank you so much uh, for moderating that and for the panelists who shared. I think we got a lot of incredible insight. With our last few minutes, I'm just going to uh, uh, take you through some important updates. So for those of you who don't know, the Volunteer NBC Learning Center, uh, Shaminda is the manager of re uh, learning and resource development for Volunteer NBC and heads up our learning center. We're always offering some fantastic learning opportunities. And, uh, you know, it's designed for board members. It's designed for not-for-profit staff. It's designed for community volunteers, people who want to get involved to really be uh, informed. And so, you know, this program of the Learning Center, uh, the Boardwalk program is just one. We have other great programs that are out there. Uh, so if you visit learn.volunteernbc.org, you can see some of the featured programs that are available now, including service excellence, uh, board essentials, virtual volunteer management, which is a new one. Some of them are online learning, uh, you know, simply online learning that you can go at your own pace. Others, you know, are special events and workshops or webinars where you can come attend a special event and get something, some insight and interact with a facilitator. So we're really excited for you to come to learn.volunteermc.org 
and subscribe to our email updates. And if you're with an organization, you'll also get to receive our V News, which is full of great resources and access to our VETCH resource library, which really helps you uh, uh, make those strategic decisions and have some tools to work with. So you don't have to invent everything from scratch, uh, access the VETCH resource library. So uh, that's what the Volunteer Embassy Learning Center is about. And, uh, and thanks to, to Shaminda and the team. And so one of the events uh, that's coming up very soon on November 25th is the Understanding Budgets and Financial Reports uh, program. Uh, fantastic, e sorry, actually, it's a web webinar that's gonna be taking place on November 25th in the evening, six to 7.30, just like this, uh, but, but on a Thursday. And it's ideal for current and new board members, uh, executive directors or leaders at or uh, of staff at organizations and aspiring board directors and it's gonna be facilitated by an awesome facilitator, Eric Plato, who's an accountant, worked with the not-for-profit sector for many years at a number of organizations and can really explain and break it down in a way that's straightforward for people to understand. So great opportunity to sign up and you can just go see that at learnatvolunteermc.org. You'll see the registration link uh, as well for that. Um, one, a couple other quick things. I'm gonna turn this one over to uh, Nazneen. Nazneen is also a really uh, important part of our team. She's our community engagement coordinator and also uh, uh, involved with the leadership of uh, Peel Gems, uh, which is uh, an organization that focuses on youth empowerment in, in uh, Peel region. Uh, so uh, Nazneen, uh, would you like to share a little bit about what we're working on in the youth portfolio? Yeah, so there's uh, two main uh, programs that we're working on. One is Care and Connect, Peel Youth Microvolunteering Month. So this is running till December 5th. Um, we're encouraging youth to take part in small scale microvolunteering activities, such as doing an act of service for their neighbor, um, creating a blog post or a social media post, um, or volunteering for a day at an event. And then they would submit those uh, activities to us and we would give them hours for it. Um, and so uh, organizations, if you have small scale activities um, that you're, uh, you need uh, help with and uh, you're looking to recruit volunteers for, um, you can send that over to us. I'll share the link in the chat um, and uh, youth will be able to take part in those activities and they can get prizes, they can get their hours and then you can also have those, those tasks completed. Um, and then the other thing we have is virtual uh, youth volunteer expo that's on December 4th. So this is for uh, students to get connected with peel based organizations um, network for them. So if you're currently recruiting uh, volunteers, high school volunteers, or uh, you have youth programs, leadership programs or mentorship programs, um, let us know and we can uh, have you as one of the uh, featured organizations at the expo. Thank you, Nazneen, and, and we hope that everybody checks out youth.volunteermbc.org and uh, signs up for that as well. I mean, there's great, great opportunities there, and please tell all the youth you know that they need to be connected. Uh, volunteering starts early, and we know that people who start at, at an earlier age end up becoming lifelong volunteers, and it, it can transform your life. So, um, that's a wrap on our evening. Um, thank you. Uh, you can access uh, learning services from volunteermc.org and, and uh, definitely benefit in a wide variety of ways. But we've benefited so much from all of you who have been here tonight. Um, we know you've given your time to something, uh, and this is one step in the right direction. Uh, with Boardwalk, it starts here. We have inclusive spaces uh, and uh, skilled leaders to come. So. Thank you, thank you so much for being here. Uh, if you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them in the chat. We'll still be online for a few minutes and we'll definitely be able to relay those uh, questions to the right people to respond to you. But if not, we wish you a very good night and uh, thank you for coming.